Good morning and welcome to the scriptures and thoughts and ideas of the Daily Post on the 17th day of October. We begin with the scripture from John chapter 4, 1 John chapter 4 and verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. If you're reading the Bible in a year today, you need to move on through Isaiah chapters 50, 51 and 52 and 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Some thoughts of the day. A wise man will make haste to forgive because he knows the true value of time. No matter what God gives you to do today, remember, he is preparing you for tomorrow. No matter how tough this day is for you to deal with, it's part of God's training plan. It carries with it a precious lesson he wants you to learn about his power, about his love for you, about his gentle yet powerful hand on your life. Even in the worst of circumstances, savour them. Seek God's hand in them. Look at what he's doing with you and for you today and know that he is preparing you to serve him better tomorrow. Those who have an easy, cheerful attitude tend to be happier than those with less pleasant temperaments, regardless of money, making it or success. The motivational thought for today Every minute you're thinking of evil, you might have been thinking of good instead. Refuse to pander to a morbid interest in your own misdeeds. Pick yourself up, be sorry, shake yourself and go on again. On this day, in the year 79, Mount Vesuvius erupted, burying the cities of Pompeii, Herculaneum, Oplontis and Stabiae, and killing thousands. New research in 2018 suggested that the eruption occurred on or after this date, not as previously thought on the 24th of August. In 1814, <laughs> On this day was the London Beer Flood. Vats of beer at Mew and Company Brewing burst, flooding the city streets with 610,000 litres of beer. The almost 15 foot feet tall wave of porter killed eight people, some of whom were gathered for a funeral. <laughs> Not funny, I'm sorry. In 1931, on this day, in America, Chicago mobster Al Capone was jailed for 11 years for tax evasion. In 1956, Queen Elizabeth II opened Calder Hall in Cumbria in the UK. It was Britain's first large-scale atomic energy station. And in 2008... <laughs> Iran's attempt to create the world's largest sandwich... 1,500 metres, failed <laughs> when crowds ate it before it could be measured. <laughs> Personal story of the day. He knows. Hagar, Sarah's handmaid, was being treated unkindly by Sarah, so she fled into the wilderness. As Hagar stood beside a spring in that desolate and lonely place, the angel of the Lord visited her. He assured her that God himself was aware of her situation. Hagar responded in Genesis chapter 16 and verse 13, You are the God who sees. She found great comfort in knowing that the Lord God saw her and knew about her distress. You and I can have that same confidence in God's watching care. We can be sure that the Lord God is with us wherever we go and he knows everything that happens to us. As the all-powerful one, he is able to solve every problem no matter how overwhelming or perplexing it may be. 
We are never alone, never forgotten, and never beyond hope. Whatever your troubling circumstances are, whether you are afflicted by illness or injury, broken hearted over the loss of a loved one, or disillusioned because your dearest friend has betrayed or rejected you, God knows and he cares. You may be deeply depressed, or perhaps you're plagued by loneliness and discouragement. But you can be confident that you are under God's watchful eye, yes? Like Hagar, you can know that God sees you. The devotional thoughts of the day, the first is entitled The Holy Standard, and the scripture comes from Romans chapter 13 and verse 9. Further references from Matthew chapter 7 and verse 12. The commandments are summed up in this one rule. Love your neighbour as yourself. Recently, some well-meaning Christians who, for environmental reasons, opposed the use of four-wheel drives in the brush, bush coined a slogan, What would Jesus drive? In the ensuing controversy, conservative columnist George Willey wryly observed that Jesus arrived in Jerusalem on a donkey, which is a fuel-guzzling and high pollution conveyance. <laughs> While people debate these two questions, we see in our scripture today that Jesus taught his disciples that their daily behaviour ought to be guided by a different question. He urged them to ask, what would I want the other person to do to me? As we read in verse 12. According to Jesus, this simple question summed up the essence of the law and the prophets in saying this, Jesus reveals an important truth about the nature of holiness. Holiness is not merely how we relate to God. It's also how we treat other people. To be holy, we simply need to ask, how would I want to be treated in this situation? The standard is simple. The implementation is difficult. Only those who have already experienced the transforming power of the Holy Spirit, can sustainably apply this golden rule to their behaviour. Only God can enable us to live by this standard. The second thought entitled, They Will Hear. The scripture from Acts 28 and verse 28. Be it known therefore unto you, that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles, and that they will hear it. As Jesus predicted, Paul came to Rome. En route, he had completed three great missionary trips and been subjected to great difficulty, opposition and danger. He'd been in prison time and time again. And in Caesarea, he had spent two years in prison. He had surely dreamed about Rome, the capital of the empire, since his childhood in Tarsus. After all, he was a Roman citizen. He had seen the Roman armies and the provincial capitals, travelled on their roads and met their consuls and kings. Now he was about to meet Caesar. From the outside, the Roman Empire appeared to be intact, but internally it was morally corrupt. From the outside, the empire seemed invincible, but internally a spiritual power was at work that would disperse every great power and usher in an eternal kingdom, the kingdom of God. Paul's arrival in Rome was neither impressive nor noteworthy, yet what he shared bore great influence whenever, wherever he went. Paul had longed to come to Rome, but he not to see the Forum, the Colosseum, or the Capitolium, or any other majestic building that adorned that city. In Paul's eyes, Rome was the location of a spiritual centre, the church. If the gospel were received in Rome, it would spread out over the whole world. Rome represented the world, and Paul was called to the world. Even though he was in chains, he still had enough freedom to preach the gospel unhindered. This is how the book of Acts ends. No one hinders Paul and no one hinders the gospel. This is the way it has been ever since. As Paul said, 
they will hear it. This was an inviting exit road from the uniquely Jewish foundation the apostles already had. The world, the Gentiles, would hear. Wherever the gospel would be preached, people would receive. Just one humorous moment for today. A young lady came home very sad from a date. She'd been going out with this guy for a little while and she said to her mother, Anthony proposed to me an hour ago. Then why are you so sad, her mother asked. And she told me, he's an atheist. He doesn't believe in God. He doesn't even believe there's a hell. Oh, her mother said, Mary, get on and marry him anyway. Between the two of us, we'll show him how wrong he is about that. <laughs> the facts of the day. A rat can last longer without water than a camel. And a typical laboratory mouse runs 2.5 miles per night on its treadmill. treadmill. Sorry. The closing thought, Lord, give me direction and purpose so I can organise my life on a long-term basis. Thank you for joining us this morning. We hope that you've benefited from and been uplifted by the uh, thoughts that we've shared today. And we hope we'll see you again tomorrow morning. Have a blessed day. Bye for now.